Hi everyone and welcome to episode 2 in our Let's Create series in creating a zipline from Apex Legends. In the first episode we set up our zipline to show its appearance and interaction with the E key with the player so it displays this hello message when we are interacting with it. In this episode we're going to add the functionality to the zipline to allow us to zip right along it when we push the E key to the end and make us go back to the start from the other direction. So where we're at we need to fix a, one thing first before we continue and that is to do this arrow here. I want this arrow to be pointing the same direction as our zipline so that when I move the end of our zipline the arrow will go with it. Currently it's stuck to the root of our actor. So I need to change it so it is stuck to the capsule instead. To do that in the component list I want to click and drag this onto our capsule. Click compile and now you should be able to see in the game in the editor anyway, the arrow is now appearing above the, sp uh, the spline's capsule. And if I was to oh, move, you can see the arrow goes along with it. That's quite important, because this is how we're going to determine the direction of travel in our spline. So to do something other than just print hello, we need to create a timeline. So the way this works is we're going to create a timeline which determines how far uh, and how fast we go along our zipline. So from the event interaction, we're going to go add timeline. And I'm going to call this one zipline travel. The zipline travel is going to be a timeline. If you don't know what a timeline does, if you double click on it, you will see that you can add various tracks to it. And these tracks determine how a value changes over time. So for example, we'll be using a float track. So click on the float track. And we're going to name this one travel distance. And the travel distance is going to store a value and output a value over time. I want to shift click on this graph to set the first point. And I want this first point to be at zero and zero. So in time zero and value zero. So at start it is zero zero. I'm then going to say after two seconds, so here's two, two seconds, I want this to be a value of one. Now the time is totally up to you, especially how fast you want it to go along the zip line, how long it should take. The value though, we want it to always end in a one. To, uh, this timeline is two seconds long. To see the whole thing, you just click these little buttons here and it will zoom it out so you can see the whole thing. Um, the timeline is actions are going for two seconds. However, its length is five seconds. We need to change this to match our time here. So change that to two. And you can see it gets shortened down to match our graph. Click compile and go back to the event graph. Now in the event graph on the timeline you'll see now we have an output for travel distance. So as this thing updates, this travel distance will change its value over time. So at 0.5, the value here will be 0.25. Okay, so that's how that works. Using that travel distance, I can work out where I should be on along that spline. So how does that work? Well, this travel distance is going to output a value between 0 and 1 over its duration. So 0 effectively is at the start of the spline and 1 is at the end of the spline. Drag your spline component out onto your blue, uh, blueprint graph. And you want to get location at distance along spline. This will output the location at a spe specified distance along that spline. The distance we want to check though is going to be this travel distance multiplied by the length of our spline. Now for example, let's just get the length first of all. So get spline length. Now for example, if the travel distance so far is 0 0.5 and our spline length is 100, this will now output 50. Which is correct because 50 is 50% or 0 0.5 of um, 100. 
So we want to multiply the travel distance, multiply float by float, by our spline length. And now that will go into your distance here. So this thing here is outputting a, dis a, a location at, uh, along the spline. The coordinate space, we want to change this from local to world. This will output a vector, which is our location, and we want to set the location of the player character. So get player character, and we want to, from its return value, set location, uh, set actor location, and the set actor location will have the new vector we just got from our timeline. Make sure you plug in the execute line into the update of the timeline. So as this timeline updates, over time, it will change the location of our actor. If I click compile now and push play and interact with it, you can see the player now travels up along the zip line. So a couple of things here. First of all, we can notice that if I were to push E on it again, I'm teleported straight to the end. Now, the reason why that works is if you think of it like a VHS player, if you're old enough to remember a VHS, um, it's like a tape. So the playhead is at the end. We need to rewind it and take the play from the start. And secondly, uh, we need to also uh, make it so it doesn't appear like it's riding on the rails, but rather than hanging below it, because it's a zip line after all, we want to hang below the zip line. So let's first of all fix the play from start. So when we go from event interaction into zipline travel, we're going to play. Now below that we have play from start. So we can just simply just tap that in to there. The second thing we want to change is its appearance. So the player appears below the zipline. So here we are setting the location of the actor, of the player actor. Um, rather than just putting in this return value here, I'm actually going to alter it slightly to make it lower. So disconnect it and then right click on each one of these and choose split to reveal the three floating points that make up the X, Y, Z coordinates. Now X and Y are going to be the same, but Z is going to be lower. So take away float by float and then plug that into the new one and you're taking away 100. Click compile. So now if I push play, I will now appear below the zip line and if I push play again on it I will start from the beginning okay next I want to be able to go the other way so if I'm facing that direction of the line I want my player character to go that direction rather than the same direction every single time so we are gonna need to go back to our zip line and before we go into the zipline travel uh, timeline, we need to work out the direction that we're currently facing. And to do that, we're going to create a function. So in your functions list on the left-hand side, choose plus function. And you want to go detect direction. And this is going to output a value. So click on the plus output. And it's going to output a float. And oh, that's going to be float called direction. So change the type to float. Um, it can return a decimal number. And the direction we work out by using a dot product. So if we just follow along for a second and I'll explain what happens. I want to get the player character because I'm checking the direction the player character is rotated. I want to get, so I want to get their rotation. Actor rotation. And I also want to get their, um, not actor rotation, sorry. I want to get their mesh and then get their rotation, sorry. Get world rotation. Because I want to get the world rotation of the mesh. Um, with that rotation, I can get the forward vector. And the forward get, what does, um, what get forward vector does is it basically returns the direction that you're facing. Okay, in a normalized vector. Normalized meaning that all the values range between 0 and 1. Once I've got that, I also want to get the forward vector of our spline. So we're going to go and drag our arrow into here. And we use the arrow to get the world 
rotation and then get the forward vector of that as well. So now we've got the direction of the player and the direction of the um, arrow. We now want to do a dot product between the two. So drag out from one of them, type in dot, and you want to just hook that up like so. Now what dot product does, it returns a value between minus 1 and 1 based on basically how similar these values are. So because these are directional values, if we're facing the same way, this will return 1. If we're facing opposite ways, it will return minus 1. So this value will now go into the direction. Click compile and I think we're done here. Go back to your event graph and we want to call that function we just made. So drag di detect direction out and plug that into uh, event interaction. This direction value, we now want to compare it and see whether or not we're going one way or the other. So let's just check whether or not we are greater than or equal to zero. And this will go into a branch because this is now a condition for a true or false statement. So if we are greater than zero, so i.e. we're going the, the correct direction, going towards the same place as the zip line, true will go into play from start, and false then being the opposite will go to reverse from end. Click compile, go back to your game, push play. So if I go up from this end, push E, I go that way, and if I push E from that direction, I'll go this way. There you go. And that basically wraps up this part of the video. So what we accomplished today is the ability to travel along a zipline, uh, both from one direction and also the other direction. Next time, we're going to be adding the functionality to allow us to basically continue traveling along a zipline from the middle. So for example, if I'm in the middle here and I push E here, I start from the very beginning. Likewise from here, I start from the very end. We now need to work out a way for us to join the zipline midway through its travel. That's going to involve a bit of math, so I hope you're ready for that. But join us next time for part three. Um, and uh, if you want to watch that part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. Um, just like these fantastic people have done so far, big thank you to everyone who supported me uh, in creation of these videos. Couldn't be doing it without you. So if you want to head over there, you can get the next part right now, as well as many other benefits and many other videos as well. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time for the third part and conclusion to our Let's Create Apex Legends ziplines. Bye!